the Prime Minister of New Zealand, uh, Jacinda, Jacinda? Just, yeah, just Jacinda. Jacinda Ardern's was like a DJ disc jockey or something like that. I think those kind of things are obsolete. You know, if anyone can kind of create a playlist on their Apple, yeah, you know, p- press play. And a lot of it's like, oh, uh, add a, add this additional backbeat or something. Right. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I know how, how, how to add music, mu- mu- music to my p- 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 playlist. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. There's a couple funny SNL skits about that. Uh, all right. Let's get into this. Yeah. Uh, New Zealand is moving to ban assault weapons. Why can't we? And, you know, of all places, CNN. So you have um, a week after mass shootings at two mosques, New Zealand government is on track to ban assault weapons next month and take back those that already are out there. Uh, So I saw already online, I think maybe 37 people have turned in their own weapons. Um, I never really use, well, here we go. Like 37 cucks have turned in their own (laughs) weapons. (laughs) Right. (laughs) To disarm themselves in the face of government. Some of them have gone to their lengths of like, taking photographs of themselves. Hero. This army, yeah. <laughs> wow, so very brave. Um, and there is reportedly 1.2 million guns in New Zealand. Right. Right. So <clears throat> we're, Small I was going to say, right. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, I was going to say like New Zealand, uh, what a backward country. But there's only 37 guns have been turned in out of 1.2 million so you know i guess it's maybe the people there are you know not that yeah fooled about this yeah they're they're uh, definitely in the news the whole world is watching them and they have every opportunity to say hey we're just another uh left-wing european country sort of you know situation and i think there's probably a lot of people there um who aren't uh, you know, maybe even the uh, Maori, you know, tribe tribe people who are, are less prone to believing this garbage than right. than uh, the average, you know, liberal Western European male. <laughs> right. Um, so I think it's interesting. Like even after the attacks, and uh, that she would go and try to say solidarity by wearing a trash bag on her head and kind of saying, "Well, you know, this is what happens." So this is me kind of saying this. And I think now on the radio they're putting. Um, like the Allah phrase uh, announced uh, on the radio. Uh, there was a funny meme that somebody wrote, like, you know, if there was a Mexican terrorist attack, do you think Donald Trump would wear like a sombrero? And- <laughs> <laughs> I wish he would. Right. <laughs> but-, <laughs> uh, but you have, uh, there's this uh, woman who like championed like the removal of like the hijab that the- these women wear as being uh, oppressive. And right. now she's going to be condemned to like decades in jail and face like dozens of lashes. Um, and because in, in these places, they are a symbol of oppression. Right. So it's kind of weird to kind of show solidarity with that. You know, how far are you going to go with that? And maybe just say, go for the whole thing, go for genital mutilation, because that's also very prominent in those places too. Yeah. It's sad. It's, it's a weird moment where, um, you know, this Muslim, uh, this mosque finds itself on the receiving end of violence. And yet so many times Christians in the Middle East find themselves, have found themselves in the past largely due to you know american foreign policy but uh, they've found themselves on, on the receiving end of of violence from from muslims and it's a it's a weird time and yet the the american media so quick to denounce um this you know type of violence because right. this guy is some crazy white supremacist and and not you know and these the victims are the ideal are the, are the ideal group right right I think there was a, like a scene where the guy picked up a gun that uh, this guy dropped and was able to maybe scare him off. Maybe think it was loaded or something like that. Cause right. I think it wasn't loaded at all. Um, I think in the very beginning, people thought that he brought his own gun, but no, he picked up a gun, right? And so even picking up a gun, sometimes even show a force that you have a gun, right, uh, is enough to uh, ward off potential attackers, right? Or even like having signs in a community, it's like, hey, this place is uh, wall armed, <clears throat> you know, and try to risk. Right. Uh, civilized society is a armed society. Right. That's, that's the only kind of placard you need. Yeah. And so you will see, like, think that the last thing you would want to do then is to disarm everyone because not as if, like, uh, bad people listen to laws yeah. <laughs> and rules to begin with. And you would want then to, uh, not just, uh, these Muslims, uh, but everyone 
to provide the, the means to defense. And I think this article kind of goes further into maybe some of the history. Yeah. Um, so they say, <clears throat> 20 years after Columbine, the first of so many major mass shootings in the U.S., the federal government has done basically nothing. I want to stop right there because there's also Kent State st- shooting. Yeah. And that was a mass massacre. They Why? did something. They did something, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just they were shooting. Right. In that situation. <laughs> and it wasn't... Uh, so this likes to make it seem like Columbine was the first uh, major mass shooting. So they're kind of ignoring everything else that the United States government has done in the past in their mass shootings. So not right. just uh, wounded knee, wounded knee, right? right. Or uh, wars that Congress never completely authorized, right? Uh, and the United States has been in war for what seventy five percent of its existence, um, right? Yeah. So like right off the bat, you know, you kind of see okay a, when we do it, right? <laughs> not okay when you do it. <laughs> Yeah, Kent State was National Guard stu- uh, that shot students for protesting the Vietnam War. Right. <clears throat> and it isn't it something that a lot of these shooters tend to be uh, psychopaths, and yet we are supposed to treat the U.S. government as fully rational, uh, a completely logical decision when they kill people around the world. But when it's a shooter uh, around, you know, in the United States, it's it's almost always a crazy person. All right. So isn't that an interesting dynamic? <laughs> So it says, uh, the federal assault weapons ban expires in 2004. Support for reinstating such a ban is less than 50%. And they have, yeah, I saw some of these, uh, videos of like teachers being shot with, uh, pellets to kind of prepare them. And so like one of them telling like, like get on your knees and just still shooting them. Right. And again, it's, it's not so much, uh, there was an incident in Maryland not that long ago where like a park res- or like a resource officers warded off or stopped, uh, a gun attack. But then, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean like it's a good counter to what happened uh, in Parkland where the police officers uh, just hid. Yeah. Right. And we saw, if anyone saw the video in New Zealand, uh, in six minutes, the guy was able to kill about 50 people. Right. And those police officers hid, I don't know, five, 10 minutes for, for a long time. And that's a lot of murder you can get yeah. away with. Yeah. Um, and I think the Supreme Court or, or a judge wrote down that they're, they, again, they have no obligation to protect you. Uh, public schools are, you know, being gun free zones and not being uh, a place where like even teachers can arm themselves. I mean, at the same time, they're public schools and I don't know if I want a teacher that's armed right. and saying, uh, you know, Hey, uh, could I use the bathroom? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Can don't you? Ask, kid. <laughs> don't ask me that again. Otherwise, you know, nine millimeter. In the mouth. Yeah, <laughs> right. it's yeah, it, it's a uh, part of the problem with the public school system is that the we don't we don't trust these people to carry guns for good reason. So why are we trusting them to educate kids? Right, you know? <laughs> right. Private schools, yeah, different. So you have um, the No Second Amendment in New Zealand continuing in here. Uh, while the U.S. was formed. Uh, after the revolution from Great Britain, I guess New Zealand is still a part of the Commonwealth there. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What does that mean? So basically the Commonwealth countries are like Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Um, I want to say a couple others, but the gist is that yes, they were given um, most autonomy, but they still consider the queen of England, their head of state. Mm. And so there's a couple uh random places where and then there's other countries that just decided to become a complete republic and uh so like the united states we we didn't keep that at all we we have our own head of state you know right yada yada i guess that's where i mean this kind of makes a point where like there was no bloody revolution but over here that there was and so maybe that's where why you'll have like a culture of uh the creation of the second amendment because you can look at other places in the world and even western countries that don't have a right to guns yeah right i think that's kind of weird uh but i guess you can also like trace it historically and how uh a lot of the liberties we enjoy here um created in europe and right. kind of pushed off and kind of evolved further and further here in this bastion place where there wasn't that complete control of tradition um more i guess of uh embracing all the different liberties that they've created in, in, in Europe and to kind of keep pushing that forward. Because uh, I think uh, in England, it's illegal. Absolutely, it, right? Yeah, I think you took, if you took a snapshot of like the way average people thought 
and, and this is not to say that Americans are like behind the times or anything, but like we we took this like snapshot of the way of the system, the enlightenment and all these ideas and freedom and then we took it with us and we just went on this different trajectory right. than, than <laughs> Europe. And then, and Europe was like, see ya. And so like in, in England a long time ago, you did have a, like an obligation to bear arms. Like you had to, you had to own some weapons. Mm-hmm. And typically that was because you, you were working as like for some, for some Lord or whatever. But it was, there was, there was a tradition established of, of bearing arms. And, and I, you know, I'm no expert on that, but, um, it, it would make sense. I mean, Jesus says also uh, today. I guess he would say, if uh, thou has a flat screen, uh, turn it in and yes. buy a gun. If buy an AR fifteen, <laughs> buy an AR fifteen. Correct. If don't have one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that that's one of those lines in the Bible that definitely gives some of the pacifists a little bit of trouble because right. they insist, you know, he completely would never support any violence whatsoever. All right. That was an odd thing for him to say, if, so, right. if that's true. So. To defend yourself. Uh, and Europe during that time had a lot of war, so I could see the means to having that. Uh, so, yeah, New Zealand, yeah. weird place. They say here, additionally, seven states have their own assault weapons bans. And I was kind of looking into that, and I guess it seems kind of true. There's, um, I mean, it's hard to get them in some of these states. Maryland apparently is included as one of these states. I was kind of surprised by that. Oh yeah, Maryland. That's why. That's part of the reason I, I don't like Maryland. And why? <laughs> why I left? Because they have limits on like magazine sizes. Right. I, I think it's 10, 10 rounds max, which is just uh, absurd. Hmm. You know. I mean, that's not a full um, magazine for you know the way that, the way that a lot of weapons were designed. So. Right. Um, There's also rain tax in Maryland. <laughs> Which I think it's ridiculous. They tax the amount of rain that calls, falls in there. And I think there's another state that's going to do that. New Jersey, uh, rain runoff or something like that off your property. And, and so they'll put like satellite images and see exactly how much rain is falling on your property. And the way it causes like erosion or something like yeah. that. And, uh, weird ways for government. Uh, they need to, what we need to do is we need to build a wall, but right. the wall <laughs> needs to be between Maryland and Virginia. So people from Maryland stop coming here. Right. <laughs> Cause they don't send their best, you know. <laughs> So yeah, there, so there there are several states that do have them, uh, but surprisingly, there is a state that uh, just came out recently uh, against that, based Missouri, and their Republicans are in charge, I think, of both House and uh, Senate there in that own state, and they're getting ready to almost pass this bill that says all federal acts, laws, executive orders, administrative orders, court orders, rules, and regulations, whether past, present, or future, which infringe on the people's right to keep and bear arms, as guaranteed by the Second Amendment to the United States, yada yada, shall be invalid in this state, shall not be recognized by this state, shall be specifically rejected by the state and shall be considered null and void and no effect in the state by the federal government. Yeah. Right, yeah, nullification, Nullif- right. <laughs> so it's, yeah, I mean, uh, this is the way that the federal system was supposed to work. You know, the states were supposed to uh, hold back the federal government from right. doing doing whatever it wanted. And um, rarely do we ever see that, and I'm sure this won't stand up, you know. Well, yeah, that's why I'm a big celebrate, celebrative fan of uh, articles of Confederation Day. I know a lot of people make a big deal of Constitution Day, uh, but I like the other ones in which uh, the government didn't work uh, and didn't have uh, much powers over the states themselves. Right. Uh, and if they didn't have that much power, you'd have this kind of market competition of, you could say, um, hey, we have little to no taxes here. It'd be like uh, what Hoppe did. On the news recently, I guess he was on like on a panel with some other people and talking about, um, yeah, someone mentioned like, well, so is this region in Germany break up? You know, talk about Brexit. It's like, yes, I think there should be a thousand Liechtensteins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a big fan of uh, Liechtenstein because I guess their head of state, or uh, he's like a monarch, right? But he's a very uh, anarchist, sympathetic, libertarian, sympathetic monarch. So right. he he just. He's like, uh, if you want to leave, he, he allows like certain districts to just to vote to leave if they want. Mm-hmm. And of course, they usually vote to stay because their, their lifestyle is so yeah. much better than everybody else's. Yeah. <laughs> and they said like under, under such those kinds of rulership, it was very difficult to increase taxes because everybody knows who the source of the increase would came, came from, right? right? Whereas under democracy, everyone becomes their tax slave and tax uh, ruler because uh, everyone 
through democracy is uh, creates a, a way for them to um, to do that. And you don't know who, who, who is or who isn't, right? And so that's kind of like the C of the tax fund that we're kind of forced to be into. Right. Uh, so, yeah, based Missouri. I thought that was... Uh, yeah. Yeah. So then you have uh, New Zealand. So the, the article goes on to say, imagine if Nancy Pelosi controlled the government and there was no Senate. So New Zealand does not have a bicameral legislature, uh, which is to say that it doesn't have a Senate. It's basically a big House of Representatives. And, um, you know, th- they go on to say that uh, she's going to announce new gun laws because she and her coalition, and they're as good as, they're as good as uh, past, basically, right? Uh, with this system that they have. And, they, and I think it goes on to say that they can, they can afford to be more nimble and uh, quick in responding, quick action. To ban assault weapons. It sounds like someone who wants to, like, uh, one of those advocates, like, just ban the Electoral College. Uh, one of those people that said, you know, there's a lot of uh, people that get in the way of passing good legislation. Of course, there's good legislation for this person if it's the Democrats that are kind of in charge of doing this, right? Uh, I think uh, what they kind of forget in terms of why America has a good history of gun culture uh, and some other places don't, but maybe they should because it's guns that saved England from speaking German. It's guns that uh, saved him twice in two world wars, right? Uh, I don't know what New Zealand's capacity was in World War II against Japanese, Japan. I think Australia was a bit involved in that. Uh, but you see the evolution of things like this. And these, these people are not even saying like just a little bit of guns, like just a, just a bump stock, right? No bump stocks were used in right. the New Zealand massacre. Um, and they're saying, you know, ban these uh, AR-15s. The military doesn't even use AR-15s, right? So that's kind of funny. Uh, but they're just going for the whole caveat, the whole a la carte of complete ban, whereas I'm kind of used to hearing, I guess, in the U.S., maybe small measurements, and then like 20 years later, you find, oh, shit, everything's banned, right? Right. And that's the way it kind of works. So I don't know if... Um, that works. Even like a- analyzing politics or government, maybe it's cool that things are efficiently pushed really fast. But in this case, it doesn't seem to uh, put any kind of checks, illusionary checks, you can say. Yeah, it's worth mentioning that the shooter wanted this type of discussion to begin to happen in the United States. He said this by engaging in this shooting and forcing this, sh- this issue um I know how important this issue is in the United States, and so I'm doing this um, to start a revolution in the United States because he knows that if the government does try to take people's guns, that'll pop off an entire uh, second, you know, American revolution, as uh, Alex right. Jones says. So. <laughs> the final American revolution. <laughs> That's right. You'll see 1776. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, I guess maybe it's not. The culture of the people there seems to be against it since only 37 people have turned in their guns. And you've, they've had the New Zealand police had to shut down their website and their phone, I guess, number where people can call in because uh, people are putting in like plasma rifles and tactical <laughs> nuclear weapons. And um, I think someone even put Harambe in there as uh, turning them in as uh, potential weapons. Clever. Yeah. yeah the uh, it, There's a lot of there's a lot of people out there who are going to take advantage of this too. You know, every time they have those gun buybacks, there's plenty, like there's people who just make a gun and then sell it to them. Right. And, you know, goofy, goofy things that, you know, so it's, it's rife with problems. There is a, the seven states that have their own assault rifles. I want to mention them yep. real quickly. Cause right. they said assault weapons bans, assault weapon bans. So California, no, no, go figure. Right. They have Connecticut, DC, Hawaii, assault pistols only. Maryland, Massachusetts, uh, New Jersey, and New York. So mostly your, your liberal strongholds, right. uh, the Yankees. And so, you know, this person advocating for Yankee reforms <laughs> and uh, disarmament, of course, uh, will not be very popular in other regions that are, you know, being opposed to that. Uh, you can't really say six simper tyrannus with uh, scissors, right? <laughs> like in, uh, in Virginia. Uh, that's not really the way to get rid of tyrants historically in our historical history of America, right? Right. Uh, assault muskets uh, were used. The, you think about when we put this into perspective, we think about guns and all of the necessary uh, aspects of them in history, in facing tyrannical regimes. And uh, then we think also 
about other things that other types of products that kill a lot of people like like opiates and things like that mm-hmm. and people make the argument that you must have these things you must have uh oxycontin because people need pain relief for various things and they never do that with guns it's always it's always just that they kill people it's never that well, people have you been using these to defend themselves for a long time, All right. and we we, uh, we need that check. We need that to have that ability to do that. All right. I like uh, the saying going around, like people are saying, "We're we have a right to health care." Well, it says here we have a right to bear arms. So, so should everyone have guns then? All right. <laughs> right. You you can have health care as long as it's dispensed by the government, and uh, you can't protect your health with a with a gun. All right. And this this person brings up health insurance too, and it was Obamacare that threatens you at gunpoint uh, with additional taxes. If you didn't sign up by a certain time or if you don't have it, uh, you're threatened with more taxation, with more theft. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, of course, this kind of continues to go on with uh, Democrats paid a political price for banning assault weapons in 1994 under Bill Clinton. Uh, he said that a 10-year partial assault ban was enacted. Uh, and it's kind of funny because most of these people, when you ask them to define what is an assault weapon, I mean, they really can't, you know. Then what, what is the difference for me in picking up a rock and calling it an assault rock? You know, it's got its an ergonomic design. It's gray in color. It's very <laughs> militaristic looking. Uh, threatening, you can say. Uh, so, yeah, they, they say that New Zealand is a much, much smaller country than the U.S. We have 326 million. And how many guns are supposed to be here in the United States? I kind of forgot that number. Um I believe they say like one for every man, woman, right? and child. Yeah. So. By God. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that, yes, there is a lot more guns in the U.S. versus New Zealand. I don't think uh, legislation like that could ever pass. Uh, but what there could be other attempts. Yeah, Bernie Sanders saying, yeah, we should kind of pass legislation like this similar to what's going on in New Zealand, right? And you always have uh, leftist Democrats going up there and saying this in their own cities, and their own cities turn into turmoil and gun war zones, uh, like Detroit or right. Baltimore, right, and Maryland. And so, I don't know if uh, if if there could ever be a gun ban. Like, say uh, Yang, for example, wins, uh, and everyone gets a thousand dollars, and yes. <laughs> we all buy an AR-15. Right. <laughs> um, and seizes the bag and buys some guns, but then he passes legislation, and then what happens next, right? I think uh, we could say it could be the shortest civil war ever. Uh, most guns are in the hands of conservatives right. more than of people from the left. Uh, what about the military? Like, do you think the military would be involved? I mean, yeah, you think about the military being... a not a bunch of Antifas, not right. composed of a bunch of Antifas from, uh, you know, San Francisco. Right. <laughs> uh, they're mostly, a majority of them are conservative as well. And I really can't really see, I mean, there's some indicate there's some things that happened in uh, Hurricane Katrina where they kind of went door to door taking yeah. guns. That stuff did happen. But those are the cops. I don't know if, if it was the military. Maybe there was some involved, but I really can't see it like a full scale of them kind of like this is like a historical thing. This is going to be remembered in the history books. Uh, your name on there. You came knocking yeah. on doors to take guns. There's plenty of sheriffs who even say they won't enforce those That's types right. of laws. That's uh, right. State of Washington or something right. like that. Yeah. Uh, you go out in the country, and it seems like, and granted, a lot of those those sheriffs' offices do receive a lot of funds from the federal government. Right. But at some point. Uh, you have to wonder whether the federal government's really going to be able to continue all this. Uh, you know, that's a talk for another day, but maybe just uh, the complete collapse of the value that they present. You know, the federal government um, that of the dollar, and for instance, so. all right. But uh, yeah, the I think there's something about this where the, this idea of following orders. I'm sure there's some people who desperately, fo- you know, are interested in enforcing whatever laws that uh, are. But this is a better argument for this is a good argument for separation of different groups of people. Right. I mean, these people don't like being in the same country as a bunch of gun toting conservative rednecks. Right. right? So they should they should not be. Right. <laughs> That's a great case for that. Um, West Virginia wanted to cede from uh, the rest of Virginia to be part of the Yankees, even though it was still, you could say, a slave state, right? 
Uh, there were many slave states in the Yankee territory, uh, even before the Civil War, uh, even during the Civil War. They didn't abolish slavery. So if West Virginia wants to separate, you know, why can't Northern Virginia, if this is the kind of stuff that they want? Uh, and there's already areas, you know, uh, clearly they must be happy that there's no guns in these other places or assault uh, weapons in California. It's like, great. Uh, keep it like that where you live, right? Right. Don't force your way of view of life uh, and culture attitudes onto everyone else, right? Don't move from California to Texas and make Texas California and vote for the same kind of legislation that turned California or Sacramento or San Francisco into a real shithole city where they have like apps now to help people uh, navigate around shit cover sidewalks, right? Yeah. Uh, these uh, utopian leftist uh, havens. So if anything, this would yeah. be a great uh, – uh, America is not one tribe. Uh, it's – multiple many different kinds of tribes many different types of countries yeah. forced into that union uh so yeah if if it ever does happen i six emperor tyrannus <laughs> yeah yeah it's um uh, i mean uh, ultimately i mean a lot of people discuss uh what do they call it collapsitarianism yeah. and the idea that you know, you're kind of betting, you're hoping for, if you're one of these types of libertarians, you're saying, I hope that there's a uh, collapse because, well, I think there's going to be a collapse. And then after that it becomes more, um, men, you know, people are more amenable to the, to the idea of self-government and, or consent and, uh, you know, separation and not being this enormous Im empire where we're all subject to the whims of California and New York and whatever they decide to vote for. And then I would see then a thousand Lindsensteins here, right, in America. And then you can have like a market, like if they want to put taxes, like, yeah, good luck. Cause you know, a Lichtenstein number 32 doesn't really have any much next to anything, maybe a sales tax. I don't know, yeah. but the market of movement of people will move away from things that are popular or less popular. Kind of like when religion imploded in Europe and, uh, separated, uh, people were mostly interested in moving to other areas that, wasn't heavily dominated by one and that kind of closely matched their uh, right. ideals. The, um, yeah, as, as far as like when you look at people, the way they move out of New York and they move to Florida for, you know, cause it's a no income tax right. uh, for retirement. So you would, you would probably see that all the time. I mean, that's just one example and it's an example almost everybody knows about. So it would happen all. And, you know, so yeah, there's still people I'm sure who will say, Oh, that's, that's not, uh, that's not reasonable or that's not going to happen. Right. But I mean, I see this division among people, even at, you know, if, if it's at your job or whatever, and people are battling over these issues and they're getting heated and you're like, you, you can't help but think this is not worth arguing about. Like the only reason these people are arguing is because they are fighting over control of this, this government, which is, uh, supposed to rule over one, you know, one or the both of them. All so, right. Uh Hope for the best for New Zealand people, the the Kiwi people. I think uh, they have the right attitude about not turning in their guns, uh, lest they become like Britain, right? And you'll have like the army being called in to kind of to search and seizures for pat downs to make sure you're not carrying uh, scissors or protractors. And I think that's a uh, a horrible thing to do to people whose culture and history have kind of been brought up on on weapons, on swords, for fighting for their own sovereignty. Um, and you can say breaking down the, the control of the monarch, right? And maybe at that time thinking it was decentralizing, but it makes you also uh, even more susceptible, right? It's, it doesn't really, hasn't really worked well for people in France. Right. Uh, right. And there was like that opera shooting, uh, concert shooting. Uh, there's, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's uh, many of those things that kind of happen. Doesn't it would bode well remember hearing that there was somebody on some bridge in London that was trying to stop a terrorist attack and he had nothing but chairs to throw at him. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The, um, it, and the idea that there's, there's ability to defend yourself. Um, I mean, so many of them don't even acknowledge that. And they, 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 I guess they understand it when it is in the moment. Right. I mean, they're throwing chairs and if they, if you put a gun in their hand, they would throw bullets instead. Right. <laughs> but they're, they're just, they, they, and even in the United States, I mean, it's easy to get into a place where you're, you're, you don't get any training or you don't, you don't really carry, even though you could, 
Um, but when you think about like entering a, any kind of a packed place, whether you walk into a theater or a church or, or wherever you go to worship or whatever, you gotta, in the back of your mind, you can't help but think, well, what would happen if somebody just, you know, burst into this place and started shooting at us, you know? Right. So. Uh, yeah, most a, a civilized society is a well-armed society, and the first person to be the first responder to that person uh, providing the fence is the individual yourself. Right. Yeah. Right. It takes forever. Like you said, I mean, the the, the government really has no no uh, requirement to provide any defense. Or, right. And by the time they they even do, they're it's it's 30, all over. Thirty six minutes late. Right. They're only there to take reports and uh, outline the chalk mark. Right? Some of these guys are such so- sociopaths, they just kill a bunch of people and then kill themselves, too. Right. So there's virtually no p- point to it. Um, there's no, there's you know, the guy in Las Vegas, for instance, I mean, they couldn't even dis- discern a motive. What, right, right. And uh, so the, what you have to be able to do is uh, find a way to provide security and put it on yourself, you know. Think about what things that you could do because there's, you can't rely on the government, clearly. Right. And shooting guns is not really that difficult. And, I mean, they have, you know, children armies in Africa uh, that know how to shoot guns, yeah. right? And, of course, it's a horror hor- condition for them to put them through. But I think guns have gone away the, like, knighthood where you have to train with the sword and train, like, uh, growing up until adulthood and learning how to swim wearing armor and dancing wearing armor and how to do a great many things yeah, uh, and so much training involved and like even uh, archery uh, guns like has knocked down the efficiency of like yeah. being uh, having capacity for violence and defending yourself. And, you know, in the words of, I guess, again, Jesus, if you don't have a gun, <laughs> sell your, your cloak uh, or your uh, flat screen and buy one. Yeah. I mean, there's no, um, there's no reason, and it, yeah, it is funny that there is this intimidation factor. A lot of people will, you know, well, I've been shooting for 30 years, and you know, so like, but a lot of times with a, any hobby or skill that you take up, if, if you approach it from a complete novice, it's almost better than having been someone who learned it the wrong way and right. then has to relearn it the right way. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that would be, uh, it, it's always worth it to take like training and lessons and you know, with anything, including like motorcycle riding, for instance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so that, uh, hopefully those uh, that are listening, uh, if you don't have a firearm, buy one. <laughs> Until then, stay liberated. And get off my property. <laughs>